What's going on, everybody? It's DJ MV. It's like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yo, 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 yo. It's Avatar Shay. And Brett, what's good? And we are back. Um, And this time we're doing, this is for Bel Air. We're starting up our Bel Air chat. Bel Air is a different type of show. Like the way they pace it and things are a little bit different. It's more of a discussion. I think more... It's a little more, uh, has more depth, I would say, even with the political stuff that's in Yeah. Um, I mean, depth and then the nostalgia of it, like, because we grew up with the original Fresh Prince, so. Right, right, right. So. Being able to compare is also yeah. an aspect. Yeah. Um, I think, so I think that is proper to, to start it off with talking about the differences between, um, this show and the uh the overall tone of this show and the overall tone of the other the the original the og triple yeah. og triple triple um so I, obviously this is only in the second season i think the fresh prince of Bel Air had like a million seasons, a lot of seasons. <laughs> um yeah but the one of the main different like i said is the tone the tone of this show is different it's a drama versus a, a sitcom family show it is a, a drama it uh and the tone is darker um yeah. it's not that it's not dark in a sense of like horror you know people getting butchered on screen it's dark in a sense of like if you if you watch the old show comparative to this show it has darker themes um in just the way that they handle things is darker mm -hmm. simply because it's not a comedy it's not on nickelodeon it's not that exactly. upbeat cheerful ha <laughs> Laugh, laugh track in the back you know what I mean it's none of that it's 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 um yeah it's just more it's supposed to be more grounded I guess in like reality so. it's more real I think yeah. yeah um also updated which is great I mean you kind of had to do that but like you didn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, like I, I I've, I've always so I always wanted a I think what brought me to the show is that I always wanted an updated version of Fresh Prince of Ballet I actually mm -hmm. would have I think all in all, I would have preferred. I'm not mad at what we got, but I yeah. think I would have preferred it the way it was in um, the comedy genre. In, yeah, um, it, it, in the more comedic. Like, I, I like how I like the drama, but a little more comedic than what it is now. Um, I think it's very minimally comedic. I don't think I laughed much at I, all. You don't laugh. You don't laugh. <laughs> if you laugh, it is at someone's stupidity rather than a joke. Yeah. Um, which is typical for that thing. I think that um, some of the characters, the way they change them a little bit works and then um, is a little annoying. Some, some like some of them. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I bet we're going to have differences on who oh, I know like we and don't like. <laughs> Just, and I, think, I think this is going to be a good conversation because I don't necessarily think that we sit on a political spectrum differently. I think that because well, I think that I'm center more leaning towards right. I think you're center more leaning towards the left. Yeah. Um. But I, which is fine because you you, you know it's just some nuance nuance differences. But I think just the way that we see kind of race relations and stuff like that is a little is different, which makes for a better conversation versus, are you on the right or on the left? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that like, <laughs> stupid fucking conversation uh, to have. And this in the show does a great job of like. Um, bringing those conversations out and amongst the black community in itself, yeah. uh, and, and handling it in like a better, for lack of a better word, like a more mature way than like you see in really any other black sitcom type of um, show. And and I, I would even go as further to say. Like let's just suppose it to you because we've been doing you and how they mm -hmm. handle the politics. It's kind of goofy and clunky. Yeah, it's like thrown and in. It's clunky. It's like oh, I don't. I, I don't. I don't actually believe the statement that you say you're trying to make. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like whereas the way they are writing it, whether I actually believe that the statement they're trying to make, they're trying to at least portray this thing as realistic as most black people see these things. Yeah, and how um, and how you would see it. Yeah, Not I mean, what well, in your face, like, hey, you nigga. <laughs> like, no, it's it's way more like covert. It's way more like there's layers to it. There's layers to it, and that's what I like. That is, is is actually layers to it because 
uh, one thing I, I would say, like you, everybody's perspective is different. Like we were talking about poker face and me and you saw the ending completely. We, yeah. into what, how we interpreted it was completely different. Not that either one of us was, I, it wasn't, I didn't take the conversation. Like one of us must be right. It was more like in my head, I was like, damn, what like not even how did she see that? But like, uh, it's crazy how we saw the same thing and yeah. got a different um, outlook on that thing. And that's what Which I think. Which then, like, completely changed our entire, like... Yes, because if I take it, if I take it how you say the episode, it's like, bam! <laughs> and like, if you take it oh, how I say wait, what they gonna do that? You know right. what I mean? so it's, it, I, I think that when people can't set aside their, their bullshit enough to, like, look into... Oh, actually take the other person's perspective or whatever. Into and, it, right, into it, account. Yeah, and, and I think that... hear it, but, like digest it yeah and i think bella is a good show to do that with because it has so many layers and different complexities and ways to see Mm -hmm. um the the stuff that they're actually showing on screen yeah Yeah. i agree i agree all right so let's jump into the conversation um i think the best way because we aren't going to talk about season one if you haven't seen season one, watch season one. We not recapping. I, I barely remember season one. <laughs> I remember honest. season one going pretty like, uh, not like episodically to like the original, but like the storyline fit the original yeah. enough for me. Well, the thing, another thing that's different between this and the original is that I, I feel like you get more of their school, mm-hmm. them actually going to their day to day, day to day. Versus uh, or Will's day to day, I would say versus the sitcom. Yes, they showed them at school and stuff like that, but it, it was kind of like a set piece here and there. Versus, yeah. yeah, it was as if they don't have access to that part of the set. All the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it is exactly how it is. Um, so oh, yeah. I think yeah, if you haven't seen it, go watch it, and then it's, I don't. I mean, I would say it's great. Yeah, I, d- I don't think that you. It also feels like a show where you can kind of jump in and kind of get some type of agno- understanding of what was happening before without having to go and binge the whole uh, the whole season. More I- I'll say go do it, but but like you could literally maybe watch the last two episodes and be like, "Cool, I think I think I got it." <laughs> right, right, and I'm caught up. But yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I want to kind of jump in and talk about the characters and the differences between the original and the current um, before we even talk about plot or anything that happened in the storyline. Um, so obviously starting with Will, um, he's the, I would say the titular character, but not in this version. It's just called Bel Air. There's no like Fresh Prince of or any of that. Um, but Will, and w- in the first season, at first I was like, it's not Will. The whole time at first, I had to really let go <laughs> of like my nostalgia and like accept these characters for who they are. But I feel like um, uh, Jabari, I believe is his name. Jabari. Um, is the actor. Jabari. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think he does a great job. I think it is hard to play someone who was playing themselves. Yeah. Like Will Smith originally was just Will Smith. That was who he was. I mean, obviously and they crafted uh, they crafted a lot of the show around, around him who, and his personality. Exactly. So now you have to you have to play someone who's still alive, um, who has been a part of this production. You know, you've met him and all of that, but like having to take that on, I think that's difficult for any actor who's doing like a biopic or whatever the case may be to really take on the persona of someone. I think he does a great job. I think this season so far um you really do get an idea of who he is and like you feel i think if he feels genuine he feels like a genuine kid from philly which i think pretty sure he is um, yeah i think i think he is from philly i i don't yeah. well, I, well i don't want to you know were you done describing Go ahead. Him? Go ahead. i think that jabari banks I, so Something that uh, something that people felt like I, I've heard people say that they felt like he got his mannerisms and, and stuff down. And I was like, I don't see that, but I can accept this is a this is a reimagining of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It's right. not nobody will ever be like you said 
Will Smith playing Will Smith. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, his name wasn't Will Brown in the show. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Exactly. That's like that was a hard like shoes. Every time he's like, "I'm Will Smith," I'm like, "No, you're not. You're yeah. Jabari Banks." Uh. So I I so in in that in in that sense, um, I feel like he he is doing a good job playing a character. Um. Yes, a playing yeah. character, not Will Smith playing Will Smith, though. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, because nobody, like you said, nobody can do that. I think in the first season, um, I was so engaged with like how they were, how they were dealing with the the characters around him, mm -hmm. um, that I didn't really pay much as to whether I like him as a character or not. I yeah. actually don't like Will. Will was actually not one of my favorite characters in the um, original. Or no, no, general. no! In in this in yeah. this in this show, uh, specifically season two, I can't. That's what I'm saying. Season one, I can't really say whether I liked him or not. I think I was just in, in like I was into the story and and seeing how mm -hmm. they fleshed out everybody else because Will Smith is always going to be the main character of this show. Um, but Will Smith in season two, I don't like. I don't like him. He's um he's he's very arrogant. He's uh yeah. And I like I know this about the original Will, but it's mm -hmm. it's a the level of immaturity in him, um, his egotis his egotism. Yeah. Um he he I think what bothers me it what bothers me about this new Will Smith versus Will Smith, <laughs> Fresh Prince Will Smith is Fresh Prince Will Smith was arrogant and egotistical and whatever and immature, and it wasn't played off as altruism whereas in this show it it is supposed to lend to him one to help other people but really it's about him looking good right. like if you look at a lot of uh it comes off like i'm trying to do the right thing but he doesn't hesitate to be like yeah i did that it's me you know what yeah. i'm saying like that kind of yeah. thing um which is main character syndrome a lot of <laughs> a lot of shows have that where they start this character off with good intentions but after a while you can see that Actually, your motivations are about you, Playboy. Right, right. Yeah, no, I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. I don't think I thought that deep into it. I think I... Maybe like, it's because I have people... three episodes and you only have two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he just does a 180 <laughs> in my mind. Um, I think like most people, though, my, my study of him is in the mannerisms and in the reactions and then kind of in like his interactions with each individual character um it feels authentic but i understand what you mean as far as his overall um motivations and stuff like that i just didn't think about that yeah no no so and i agree with you like him playing this will smith character is authentic i right. think or authentic to will smith but when we're talking about when I start looking at like his actual character, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's no, I get it. yeah, I get that. Um, but yeah, so I think I think overall, Will, he's there's a lot of emotional layers they kind of put him through, and like emotional struggles, which are supposed to cause us to see emotional layers. I feel like to speak to your point of his immaturity level, um, they feel forced. Forced. Mm -hmm. Very forced. Very like if you really would react this way, like if your reaction is to blow up and be angry, like the the quickness and your ability to see someone else's point of view doesn't make sense. Um yeah. So there's just things <laughs> that don't really add up <laughs> from a writing perspective. From a writing perspective. That yeah. Way, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of complexity to it. And I, I get they're trying to add that complexity to a character who did not have that complexity. It didn't. It didn't. And that that's and that, that you 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 just took the words right out of my head when I was like rewatching it just now. I was like, a lot of the characters around him have complexity. Will mm -hmm. does not. No. He's he's not, I guess because he is the kind of the ringmaster or the uh, what's it, the puppet master? You he's know, a, I mean? he's a narrator essentially. Yeah. This is his life from his perspective. Yeah, even though nobody's narrating, it was he is. Yeah, life. he is the he is kind of the guiding force between everybody else, and we get to see everybody else kind of grow or go through these complex emotions and feelings. 
but he ha- he's kind of one note. I agree. Or like um, over dramatic in some places and like under and some other ones. I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, like just to like throw it to what happened, like in his one scene he had when he essentially broke up with Lisa, although I'm pretty sure they were already broken up. Like, yeah, there that wasn't was enough. No, nope. huh? go ahead. I would I would say I would... There wasn't enough like there wasn't enough emotional depth there for me in him there wasn't enough like it was just weird it was a weird scene that i almost could have gone without <laughs> and then like uh, uh, uh this is a criticism of the episode of the episode yeah. everybody's having these really um important conversations at parties yeah and like the loudest places same silly same silly yeah you breaking up with your your if y'all wasn't broken up or whatever you breaking up with sure her at your cousin's birthday party. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you were too. I was agreeing with you. That was a comment I was making yeah, as yeah. you were saying, like, yeah, that I believe in first in season one, they were supposed to be already broken up yeah. or whatever. But like, okay, okay, so juxtapose the season, the the uh not the season, the scene before that with them two in it, where he goes and was like, Can we talk about our situation? Yeah, you get the feeling that she's more like on the like, I don't know. Yeah, and he makes this face this really like <sighs> Like he's heartbreaking face, like yeah. really sad or stressed out face. To only then, when he's in a scene with her doing it, uh, you know, when I said I love you, I meant it, right? Yeah, yeah. From the back, she's behind. He's behind her. Yeah, but I love you too. It's dramatic. <laughs> yeah, and he, he walks away. I was like, okay. And then they also made note to show that when like Phil went to speak to Will at that party, that she was walking up and got intercepted. Mm-hmm. Throwaway scene. Throwaway scene. <laughs> because anyway. once once they have the conversation, that was a dumbass conversation. It was all she didn't even need to be at the party for all I cared. Not I think it's weird that you still hang around the cousins you were fucking. <laughs> Not really. That's weird. It is weird. Um yeah, I and that your family accepts you as the girl that fucked both their son and their nephew. But I mean, no- I, I've seen it. Your family. Well, not in that way, but like, you know, the ex still hanging around. Not Yeah. No, I've seen the ex hanging around, but not the ex of like, you know, like it's messy. Yeah. <laughs> You're the ex it of is. two people now. Yeah. And we're like, come to the party. They might not be there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who was next on your character list? Well, next to my character list, I mean, it was the Banks family, right? So starting with Carlton. Um, I know that Carlton had a lot caught a lot of backlash or Ali is his name the mm-hmm. actor's name mm-hmm. Ali I actually feel like he's the, the most Lotan. complex character on the show he was a complex character honestly in both shows it's both just shows? <clears throat> in the original and oh oh yeah 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 okay okay <clears throat> I it's forgot just, what we were talking about the original <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just the complexity of Carlton comes out much more in Bel Air, and I love it. And that's because the tone. And that's because the tone is different. Yeah, like it, it, Carlton was a joke. Uh, exactly. His complexity was a joke in Fresh Prince, where here it is now. We're gonna really uh, go into why he has like this. Um, his his own personal politics, his anxiety. Um, what like what what actually a person like Carlton would be like in real life if we were yeah. not trying to laugh every two seconds? Exactly, exactly. A a rich black kid in the middle of white suburbia. Yeah, there's issues associated with that. Like, and the fact add maleness to it because there's a um in within mm-hmm. in season one you get to see how if we juxtapose it to Ashley. And um, Hillary, we don't see that hierarch- hierarchical kind of thing that he has yeah. like with his teammates and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, so I, I like yeah. it as much as he was like, un- unlike he's unlikable as a person in season one. <laughs> yeah. In season one, he's unlikable, but so was Carlton. And people yeah. tend yeah. to forget that, that yeah, because that's we it, had yeah. so many years of loving him and the yeah. dance. But in the beginning... He didn't yeah. fuck with Will. We didn't yeah. fuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're absolutely right. Um, I, I, I think because we're not laughing, it's just worse. Yeah. You know, it's like it's yeah. it's worse, and you get to see him do stuff that is 
a little more diabolical, I must say, than mm-hmm. the original Carlton because it is that was a, again a, a sitcom and not yeah. really grounded in reality, um, more than this show is. Uh, but I but I tend to like when you show me a character that I just can't stand, like person like personality wise, I yeah. don't like you more than likely that is the most complex character, most fleshed out character. Uh, because what I notice is villains tend to be a little more fleshed out than the... Um, yeah, because you need the, a backstory. You need to know why you're like this. Yeah. Because yeah. as a society, we can't accept that some people are inherently <laughs> just don't have the best intentions for others. So we need to know why. Yeah. But yeah, I think Carlton's character here is a lot more complex than Will uh, is a, has a lot more obviously they gave him anxiety which I think is fair for the type of the, if we were putting this in the real world Facts. the type of character that original Carlton was would have had anxiety would have felt the pressure all the time of like how to perform and how mm-hmm. perfect he has to be to get into Princeton and that it, because he was exhibiting those signs but it was jokey so you know yeah, we didn't exactly um, and then I think it also came out during a time where a lot of people did not know what anxiety was still, you know what I mean? Or how it showed up in the various ways that it shows up. Or if it's in the black community at all, because we like to pretend like that's, that's, health, yeah, that's, that's mental it. issues just don't exist. And see, and that's one of the things that I, when I think about it, I think that's something that we say a lot without considering that a lot of people just don't know what these things are. Yeah. I, I, yeah it's I, not taught. It's not talked about. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I think more often than, yes, I do think we come up across parents, older people saying, no, I ain't got that, you know, you know, in that way. Yeah. But I think more often than not, they do not know what it is. Like, if I go tell my grandmother that she has anxiety, she's going to say she don't have it because she doesn't, that word makes no sense. But if I say that, if I say that, grandma, your need to control everything, like, you know, always have a, a always have a clean house. And the second somebody does one thing that is not exactly what you want them to do, you are having a hard time. That's anxiety. If I explain it to her in that way, she might be like, "Oh, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe I do got that thing." But if I just exactly. say, "Oh, you got anxiety," or "You got depression," you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it shows up in, in so many different ways. I think it's, I think the way we kind of paint a broad brush stroke over things is like not helpful to our community who we say we're trying to educate it needs to be broken down yeah i agree because like for example and we'll get back on topic jamal recently like within our relationship has understood that he has anxiety um just from dealing with my anxiety and me knowing that that's what i have um and him realizing that he you know he has the same hang-ups but just in different situations and like being able to put a title to that was groundbreaking for him. And that, you know, he's a 31 year old man. So um, I also, speaking about Carlton, want to talk so not only just about his mental health, but in these two episodes, you see him like talking to Will about wanting to, to, to be cool. Like he feels like he's cool when he's with Will, which, you know, is always lame in terms for you hang out with the black people. I want to be cool <laughs> with the black people. Like that's basically what he meant. Um, and you see that um, in both season one and these two episodes of season two, um, his constant kind of struggle with a straddle in the fence. With yeah, like I don't want to say he struggles with race identity because he's confidently a black man. Um, but in a world when you're the one of only honestly even the bsu those background characters with the black student unit were not black I, oh. <laughs> did you not see that no i only paid to, paid attention to the main there were characters. some i will okay i will minimally say there were some racially very very racially ambiguous people in that same room um, so meaning that carlton is probably one of the darkest skinned people in that high school mm-hmm. from what they show you there's not a lot going on mm-hmm. in the melanin department i mean even um, even will is brown yeah. paper bag yeah facts yeah. and i feel like for me i resonate with that because that's how i 
grew up. Like that's that was me. My sister and I were the only two black kids. Let me take that. Back. And you are lighter than him. To I am extremely light. I mean, it's winter. Let me get <laughs> come back in a few months. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I need a little sun. Um, but yeah. My sister and I, who's also as just as light as me, we experienced that same situation. And honestly, no matter how light you are, if you're and not white, you're not white. And, and, that's, and, and so that's what I was about to get at. Like, I, I feel like colorism, right? I'm not saying yeah. that, um, I'm not going to say that it doesn't show up in white circles where or places where whiteness is appreciated, that the lighter you are, the better you are, because I've heard actresses like viola davis i just read her book and i can't say that her 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 life is invalid because i've never experienced this thing you know what i mean um i do think that we black people we struggle with with uh we see life this way so it cannot not a situation cannot never be this way if that makes sense to me Mm -hmm. so like I, i feel like because we are we've have such strong history in racism and being racially profiled and stuff like that even a situation that let's say blanket is not that way it still is going to be seen that way which yeah. makes it that way because or that is the, the first lens. thing that comes up yeah even because, if, if we correct ourselves later like yeah is that that's the lean that's the lens in which we are taught that's a lot really of times time. yeah every time. yeah <laughs> that's the hit yeah, i'm right um, up that <laughs> um so, but still to validate her experience, because I was not there to say, hey, Viola, that thing you're talking about didn't right. really happen. You know what I mean? Um, she talked about how, you know, if you weren't white, close to light skin or like white passing or whatever, that was a thing. Um, and so I think that that's valid. But I also think that sometimes when you it don't matter how light you are, when you are that one or two kids that are different than the other kids. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about race, so I'm gonna say white, white or black, but I mean, but but I literally just mean different. Different, yeah. Different. Uh, it's gonna be a problem and they gonna pick at what that difference is. Mm-hmm. So the difference is, because hum- our, the way humans are set up, our minds are set up, is to, to like what's like us. Mm-hmm. Point blank period. Yeah, we that's like why kids like. get baby dolls that look like them or should. <laughs> Or, or when when we are going to meet new people, we talk to them about what's relative to us, and we go, "Oh, you like that thing too?" Yeah, and then, then when relate. it's like that thing that when you don't dis when you disagree with something, it's kind of like oh, it's kind of a buzzkill, right? Yeah. Because, because because we're set up in a way to like what's like us, and so when somebody shows up that's not like us, ew. You know what I mean, and then yeah. it goes a step further to poke at that thing that's that's that shows up differently, um, yeah. which is why we have all the isms now, right? <laughs> you can be ableist, this and that, ages, that's, you know, yeah. all the isms. No, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I feel like as far as his his character development as a whole, I'm I'm here for it. In these two episodes, those are the two main things you see Carlton kind of struggling with is his anxiety, his mental health, and then fitting in and and with the black community within Bel Air Academy. And I, I, I think this is a bigger commentary on what people call blackness. Yeah. Um Back. because it came up it came up when we were watching you people. Me and Yang mm-hmm. watched it and then y'all end up watching it. And something about something in, in me and her's conversation brought up the whole blackness thing and she was like what is blackness and i was like uh basically it's a caricature of stereotypes of what people believe yeah. generally what Makes, black qu- quantifies you as being black black but american it's amongst black specifically it's, yes american black and it's amongst black people it's not something yeah. i don't i don't really hear white people being like your blackness is at stake if you don't do only Joe Biden did that, but <laughs> 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 he's for he's y'all's guy though. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but it's something that other black people kind of use to qu- quantify, qualify how black you are or aren't. Yeah, and if you yeah. behave or don't behave or do a subset of behaviors, you are living in your blackness. For me, somebody like me or like my my fiance is that. There is no living in my blackness. It's kind of right. this is who I am. This is how I was raised. It's not something I pretend to be or perform. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that's what Carlton is going to end up having to accept. Yeah, that's what I loved about going to Howard, right? Because it was the first experience I had ever had being around all Black people, um, especially in a school setting. But it, I mean, in general, other than my family, um, I was raised in Southfield. And at the time, the neighborhood that I was raised in was highly Jewish. So I really was not around or submerged in Black culture. Um, but going to Howard and seeing like kids skateboarding, which I, I never saw a black person skateboard before, you know what I mean? Or like seeing, you just seeing that, like, and I'm not saying that I had a preconceived notion of what black was, because clearly my experience is way different than anyone. I know that I'm from Michigan, like that alone puts me in a different experience than someone from New York or someone like you from, you know, this area from the DMV area. Um, <clears throat> So, like, I knew that, you know, there were different types of people <laughs> who are melanated, but um, seeing it firsthand and experiencing it is different than it's kind of like if you've never traveled outside of, of where you're from, like, you mm -hmm. you can read about it, you can see it on TV, but it's different than, like, seeing and being there. And, and I, I, I would ask you, you coming around, like, for y'all that don't know, I was raised in D.C. in the hood in different I, uptown DC is mostly where she was able to see, but I've lived in Southeast. I've lived in Northeast. I lived in all, all over DC pretty much except for the rich parts, the really rich parts. Like, except for those. Like where my, where my family is now is considered a more rich neighborhood, but it wasn't when I was growing right. up. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm talking about Tinley Town, Georgetown. I didn't mm -hmm. live up there. <laughs> you know what I'm right, saying? Friendship right. with all the president's kids Facts. go to school and shit the like that. The embassy children. Right. Didn't have didn't have that experience, but I got to experience them by, you know, going to visit Proxy. those areas for living ship, in shopping. the area. Yeah. You run right, right. But right. when you came around people that would be considered lower income, right? In DC. And but like I brought you to the hood, essentially. Yeah. Did they have any questions about your blackness or treat you like you weren't cool or you were corny because you spoke? No. Uh, what I feel like is there's people who are making blackness be a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. And it's not realistic to what's actually when you deal with people day to day. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like it does. it's the people that, that spend most of the time arguing and stuff online that that have the most to say about what blackness is and it's really like nah nigga you black I don't have to be into case in point you people I don't have to mm -hmm. be into sneakers and champion and all the brands to be black I don't right. have to be into Fred Hampton and the NOI or We're whatever all the classic black. movies yeah right. like <laughs> like I often feel like it's because of people's experiences I, I, and I'm gonna say growing up in like wider places that mm -hmm. they feel this need to 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 like oh end up overcompensating to where blackness becomes a set of behaviors or characteristics versus yeah. just accepting yourself for who you are facts facts and i feel like i went through all that like so i see <laughs> both sides like i went through like the struggling and the understanding like i went through the carlton stage and i went through the like okay so how do i fit in what do i need to do how do I need to look, act, you know, all that? Oh, wait, I just need and to, then I got here I just need and to be like, myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and then on top of that, I think, and this is, you know, just my personal experience. I also feel like with my personal style, right? I went from like relaxing my hair until my stylist fucked my shit up and it fell out. So I went natural. Going natural also, I was a part of my like owning just who I am. Like this is how the fuck my hair grows out of my head. I don't even know how to tame it most of the time. Like, and I'm comfortable with that. But yes, oh. we can move on to Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> we have other characters I'll to talk like about. Her. But I don't have much character. to talk about with Ashley. Um, I do feel like they're giving her more character than original Ashley, um, which it's always great to see OG Ashley, Tatiana Ali in this season. Fucking awesome. Um, I feel like they're just doing a lot with her. I feel like she's a 12-year-old girl. She is. She she's is gay. Me. And she's an activist. 
and the political she's this. people that the political people that I talk about that I yeah. do not like, they are put. That's why I said I don't like her, and not not. She's because, like a pawn character. Yeah, she's a pawn. And, and I was about to say not because she has these political ideas, but literally she is the she is a pawn. It's all for her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, make this her. Make this. This is this. There's no other seemingly character development else's. outside of her identity politics. Yeah, yeah. I don't like. I don't like. So. This is a flaw um, that I feel like you, you I, I can say what you, I can yeah. say, okay, okay. you're by, uh, yeah. I'm unknown, we're going to call it. I, I okay. use the market as lesbian, but I know that my sexuality spans <laughs> in many different ways, Yeah. whatever. Um, but we use these labels to simplify things for other people more than it is simplified for me. I don't feel a need yeah. to ever say I can't be attracted to a man because somebody said I'm a lesbian. That's right. your business. Um, but I don't our LGBT community is making a big mistake or they're allowing Hollywood to do something I feel like is really shitty on the back end. Like they they trying to p- pretend like it's a good thing. Oh, we 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 we're writing inclusion. gay characters. And yeah, inclusion, but you writing them so one dimensional. Like the bulk of Ashley's personality is her per, her identity politics that is yeah. not how most of us operate and not at 12 and not at, at 12, 12 that is not how <laughs> i operated <laughs> like, at all i don't know any 12 year old honestly that operates in that fashion at 12 uh, we, uh, we were still trying to actually figure out what it was whether it was i mean and i get it now this is t- different times there's a lot more words and stuff to be in and understand who you are yeah. from that perspective, but there's still a journey within that. We were still trying to figure it out and not have it all figured out. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is a flaw with these young kids these days. Are we the old people? We're the old people. We're the old people. Yeah, we are. There's bitch. There's two generations after us. We're old now. There's two generations. That's not years. <laughs> We're old. Generations span like a decade and a half <laughs> like each. <laughs> We're old. I just, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't under, I would like to like Ashley because it's Tatiana Ali, you know what I'm saying? It's it's Ashley. She was cool. I would have appreciated if they would have did a nod um, or a callback. I don't remember if they did. So if they did, uh, I'm I'm wrong. But um, a nod to that scene in the original where like he first moves in and she's listening to like jazz music or something yeah. like that. And he brings rap and starts teaching her how to, how to rap and play the yeah. girls and shit. I would have appreciated something like that. Uh, but maybe that would have been too lighthearted. Too silly. Yeah. Too silly. Um, but you actually I mean, don't, see do that. You don't see their relationship. You don't, you don't see anybody's relationship really develop except him and Carlton. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that. That's it. I was gonna say you do see like they have a relationship, like at her party. You know, I only want Will to come. Blah blah blah. Um, but you don't see the development of that. I think they did a better job of that in the sitcom than they are doing in the drama. I yeah. feel like they're trying to put a lot on Ashley's shoulders, mm-hmm. and she's twelve. Mm-hmm. Just make her a kid. Just make her a kid, <clears throat> or. I mean, you've already added in, like, Lisa wasn't a character in the original. Um, yes, she was. Oh, yes, she that was. That was um, Will's love in Need Alone. You're right. But Lisa wasn't Carlton's ex. No. No, I think Carlton initially did want to get with her, but uh, I think, I, if I remember correctly, there was a scene where they first went to the little uh, poetry spot they used to go to, if you remember, yeah. and they both I think Lisa was there and it was both like iron her or something like that. But Will was the only one that stepped to her. Something, 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 something. It, it's vague, but it was. Yeah. Like that. Um, okay. So, um, so moving on from Ashley, because honestly her character, it is her birthday. It's bland. It's pretty bland. There's not much. I mean, she, she is the one who interacts with Tatiana Ali. That's her personal teacher in that moment. So Honestly, think and I feel like if they made if they brought her back, they should have they could have made Will his father. <laughs> True. 
True. I mean, he was only in he was only in an episode for like a like he was only yeah. in the show for like a scene. Yeah, you know I, mean? I like, wouldn't. Like, I would was. not have been mad. I don't need Marlon. Wayne. It was weird. Marlon Wayne's playing that character was he, it was it was I I liked the way he did it, but it was weird seeing him do, play that 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 character. I guess because we're so used to seeing him be goofy and mm-hmm. you know white chicks and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Um. Also, like, so yeah, he was old. and then. <laughs> We have Hillary. Oh, that's my baby. And Hillary. Not Hillary, okay. but like Coco Jones. Yeah. There's a couple I, celebrities that I would leave her for. You know what I mean? I that's one of them. Like, I love Hillary's character, honestly. I think it's better than Hillary's original character. I think there's more depth to her. Mm-hmm. I think making her an influencer was ingenious because I have no fucking clue what Hillary did originally, but wear nice things and shop and like, so she would have, but she would have been an influencer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it makes sense. Yeah. Like it absolutely fucking makes sense. Um, and I like her character. I think I think she is not as she doesn't come off as like snobby and mm-hmm. bitchy, for lack of a better word. Um, as the original Hillary, although I loved original Hillary too, right? Like she resonated with my teenage, preteen soul. Um, if we were going like character trait for character trait in a modern area, Hillary would be a mean girl. That's the only signature they didn't give her was a mean. They girl. didn't give that to her, yeah. um, but I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. I think it I works. Think, I think it works. I think. The Hillary that I see in Bel Air, to me, comes off more like me, right? Most people think that, like, they meet me and they're like, oh, she's stuck up. She's this, she's that, and the third. And then you get to know me and I'm down to earth as shit. Like, I'm, I'm cooling most of the time. Um, and that's how I feel she is. And I like that. I think that's better than her being a mean girl when no one else in your family is in particular, like mean mm-hmm. they're just rich mm-hmm. like <laughs> uh, I don't I don't have much to say about Phil except I had to like today I had to like look up whether he was a judge because I was like I don't think a judge is supposed to have his own law firm but <laughs> yeah, no, he's, um, not a judge. He's, a... He's, a, he's running for he was a lawyer running for district attorney yeah um, I think Maybe this is because of the way I grew up, but like in laws don't love the kids as nearly as much as the biological people do, and it mm-hmm. almost feels like that's his nephew versus her nephew. Yeah, you, you get you get what I'm trying to say to an extent. I mean, I see it. I see it. Um, but I do think they did put in a couple of scenes where you see Viv like talking about how her sister you know what i mean is yeah upset yeah with them and... yeah i mean but i'm just what i'm saying like they talk about it but i feel like what they show yeah it almost feels like will is more of his nephew yeah than her, yes. her biological nephew Facts. <laughs> and I, but I think part of that and maybe this is just me putting my own like personal perspective on it is because he put his name on the line for him so now it's more for personal gain that i have to ensure that you're safe and you're in my house I see where you are and what you're doing. <laughs> um, so I have to care than it is like Oh, I think I think that's fair. I'm just I was just talking about the emotional dynamic between them just or yeah. the way she sometimes she plays more of a background character to the relationship of them that they have, versus yeah. the yeah, and maybe it's because he's a, a young man, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know, but yeah, it is that it was one thing that I thought was kind of weird, but he Uncle Phil feels slimy to me. A little bit. Like he got like a lot of skeletons in his closet. Like, yeah. Like, honestly, if Uncle Phil was just like a really good car salesman, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really he good lawyer. Care. So it's even yeah. more believable. Like how he Exactly. Like what what all have you covered or you know, much like he you was quickly dropping. did for Will. Have you done that for other people? And I don't know if we'll see that. We might see I- that. Yeah, and especially, I mean, not Joffrey, I said Joffrey, with Jeffrey, especially how Jeffrey is. Their dynamic this, feels yeah. very like men in black. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to spoil something for you. Mm-hmm. Jeff, Jeff, on, he, he into some shit. Yeah, he is. 
I mean, I know you're spoiling, but I can also. Oh, okay. I, right. also I mean, talk. I wasn't spoiling, well, but I was like had, giving details, but. When they had the conversation about his son, you know what I mean? And he's like, I know, you know, we had a pact. Like, I did it, did it. Like, you can tell it's like, oh, okay, you're like mm-hmm. hiding from some shit or mm-hmm. like living an incognito life. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, no, no, no. Jeffrey can get it. I though. mean, I I'm mean, hold you. I mean, within the Banks family, he's in. Oh, okay. He's on. He's he also feels he's like being that, a little yeah. weird. He's being a little weird. Okay, yeah. he can get it though. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. I was like, oh, I like New Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Old Jeffrey definitely gave Butler. New Jeffrey gave Butler. Hey. <laughs> I like Old Jeffrey's punch like jo- like his yeah. I, I miss the jokes though I do yeah. miss the the joke because he was a lot of the com- comedic relief he was uh with his smart Alec, Alec comments and stuff like that um but I do like the the he's the fixer of the family and yeah it's the um, family planner is yeah. what I give Jeffrey more yeah. than Butler yeah um what's it called he's a house like a house manager like you know how like in yeah. other rich yeah. stuff they have like a house manager and then they have butlers and maids under them that's what mm-hmm. jeffrey Moore feels like than a actual butler yeah. um and so i like that i think that Aunt Viv needs something to do that's what but this whole like art thing is art thing feels something like something to do yes so that's- it's very much on par with who aunt viv is no, I what I mean by I mean how they wrote her, like in the old show, it feels like she needs something to do because she's a rich suburban mother. Yeah. Whereas in this particular show, to me, it feels like this whole art shit she's on, um, feels like we're just giving her something to do. If that makes sense, like. No, I get it. I feel like she could have been like a professor. Or like maybe maybe even part time, you know. Yeah. She teaches at the community college, does some yeah. art classes here. There could have been like I get that, I get that. It feels like you just gave her this and told her to be a supporting role to fill. Yeah, yeah, and like the whole first season was like not it was supposed to be about her having her own thing and not being just supportive to fill, but this where the art thing is going now it just doesn't feel believable it just feels like you just it's gave like this character through. it's really giving the job i just quit <laughs> <laughs> i'm really trying to help out with the family and then after a few months it's like okay every two seconds she's like we need a black person to be in here black 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 black, black. Yeah, i'm like yeah. okay so y'all beating down this you giving her and ashley the social Very justice similar, um, narrative uh yeah, yeah. They're, so her and Ashley have similar personalities as far as like activism. Um, her and Hillary are going through very similar situations. Yeah. Um, and those mirror each other where they're both struggling with their bosses or, you know, someone above them. Um, and that plays out in those first two episodes. Really from beginning to end. <laughs> um, it starts and ends more or less in those two episodes so yes and then so then we have jazz uh you know because he's the main character uh main so he's in the supporting cast but the main character yeah um i like jazz i think <clears throat> i think this jazz is attractive um i agree i, agree. I like the way he dresses mm-hmm. uh, so i like to set this the the pieces that they they give him and his personality a lot especially his frames oh i'll be loving his glasses yeah um i don't quite believe him and Hillary as a couple and I feel like him being more mature than Will is weird. Yeah. Because the it, 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 the it maturity makes their... was the same. There was an age gap and you knew there was an age gap because he's not in high school with him. But the maturity level was the same. And they treated Jazz like Urkel, right? Like yes. Yes, <laughs> or like go home, Roger. Like yeah. that is how Jazz is treated every time, and you don't get that vibe here. I mean, you know, the meme of Jazz being thrown out of the fucking house is, I mean, timeless. But you wouldn't get that. That you wouldn't be realistic for this Jazz, not unless he did something like really, really disrespectful yeah. versus being a nuisance. Yeah, and it'd be more of like a escort out. Um, yeah. and, and that's no. fine because that's what it's supposed to be but I will say that like I get what you're saying that they're not completely believable um, 
I just not not necessarily. What do you you mean, Hillary and Jazz as a couple? Yeah, as a couple. Okay, I was about to say because with with Will and Jazz as friends, it's believable. It's just that because he's so much mature, it makes their age got more obvious. Is that, yeah. that was my only and it like make, it makes it makes it weird club, if you're hanging around like, with the kids. Drink, yeah, this and it's like yeah. you're really giving dad vibes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, it's it's weird that you're hanging out with the kid. Then <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, because I feel like. Old Jazz would have been in the car. They would have had beers in the car, hit the bar. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do. I, so I kind of like the relationship. And I feel like we'll get more of the, like, conversations of um, financial, like, higher, of uh, course. hierarchy. That's what that, I feel here. like that's what that's supposed to explore. And probably what's going to be Uncle Phil's aversion to them dating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, similar aversions as Lisa's dad had against mm -hmm. Will for being from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I I like jazz. I they he's Muslim. I think that was that was a notable thing that they. I think that had. they should have gave Will though. You said what? They should have gave that characteristic to Will. Yeah, he's from West Philly, and that's a big Muslim community. Whereas, um. I can't see that being a reality. Uh, not saying that there's no Southern Muslims LA. in Southern LA. Exactly. That's not saying that at all. It's just not as big as like the West. Like, well, Philly is known for breeding Muslims. <laughs> yeah, I really wonder if that's going to come back up. If that's gonna because they showed that hang up. Yeah. Or was, or was it like, just like, else... we're showing this thing to show that yeah, we're close? Show, show me that. Because then you don't see him praying at work, and we see him at work a lot. And devout Muslims stop what the fuck they're doing and pray. So we don't see that. I feel like it might come back up. If not, once again, much like the Lisa scene, it might just be. It might just be there. Maybe, I mean, maybe not. Yeah, I think I think it just might be something in the background that they were being. Um, you know, we want to show inclusive or a little bit more depth to his character or whatever. But yeah, it since it doesn't, it, it wasn't in season one. And yeah. it, 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 like you didn't even foreshadow. He didn't yeah. say like I'm on my dean or nothing like that when he was talking about having a relationship with Hillary. He hasn't talked about none, none of those things, which will be key factors of somebody who practices Islam. Yeah, I, anyone I, I know who practices Islam. I mean, I've never dated anyone per se, but I feel like that's that's a major part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. He don't I mean he don't he don't none of his. Uh, his set Man, choices are is... none, nothing, nothing <laughs> gives a uh, Muslim to me. Uh, but well, that, that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, uh, absolutely fine. I, it, it just felt like a, one of those things you just throw into a uh, show. Just feels like something else there. <laughs> just throwing in there on this character. It works. It works right here. Yeah. So what do you have? How do you feel about the two episodes that we got? What are you thinking? So overall, um, <clears throat> these, I mean, these episodes are more or less they're they're set up. Obviously, it's the first two seasons, or first two episodes of the season. Um, I'm I'm happy with it. I feel like we have a lot of different storylines going on. It's giving like jump from this scene to this scene, this scene, and each scene is a different conflict that's being addressed. Um, so, looking forward to see how that all plays out in the long run. Um, but yeah, I think overall I would give these two episodes like three stars. Three stars. I think, Maybe. I think, I think I'm yeah. with you on the three stars. I think, um, again, I, I like Bel Air. I, I, I don't think it's doing anything like revolutionary, Yeah, uh, but it is a decent show. I think the acting for the most part is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the dialogue, even though it has its places where it's forced or like weird, is generally okay. Like yeah. I think I think the writing is is like pretty solid. It's it's it's, it's, it's natural it's, enough. It's, it's natural enough. Like there's no yeah. like no like big, really big, like, oh my god, what the fuck? Like why would y'all yeah. like I um I don't let me finish that though. I, there's no really big, like, bla blaring or glaring stuff. There's like minimal stuff here and there that's like, yeah. yo, what, what, like, 
all right, I get that you're trying to force this conversation or this emotion so this thing over here can happen a little bit later. That's fine. But yeah. it's not like it's not like super contrived or anything like that. Um uh I will say I don't <laughs> with this whole protest thing. <laughs> I think we should find out whether the teacher actually wants to be rehired before. <laughs> right, because she might be okay with this. Like, maybe, like, upset, but, like, overall doesn't, maybe she don't like any of her coworkers at all. So she's, she's, I. Maybe she was, look, maybe she wanted to get out anyway. Like, maybe she, she just she, kept giving the books. Or, or once getting fired, she was just like, I don't want to go back there. They, you know what I'm saying? I got to go through all this shit to, yeah. to, to do this anyway. I I think that the little girl, gone because she saw her give the book to Ashley and then going home and saying that this very specific thing, uh, Miss, whatever is Miss Hughes is giving Ash, giving us books that are not on the curriculum. I think that I definitely that's wrote it down as hating ass white student over here is this. <laughs> I think that is very far fetched. I think that a kid would go home and be like, mom, I saw Miss Hughes giving Ashley uh, you know, showing face some some sort of favoritism so, versus that specific. I would say that in that first scene, she said, "I'll give you extra credit." It could have been that, and I could see that. I could see a little girl being like, "Well, how does she get the opportunity for extra credit?" And I, I don't. Right, but the, I'm talking about this it, it, different. You know, we got different ways that you could have explored it, but that very yeah. specific line was like, mm, "Yeah, that's not characteristic for like a 12 or 13 year old to really." Right. To, to really, really care, yeah, to really care about whether a book is in curriculum or not, girl. You just get extra homework as far as we're concerned, right? Right, <laughs> but know. like getting extra assignments for extra credit, that type of thing, I could see being the real hang up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, um, not giving that same opportunity to everybody else. Yep, uh, I think that they, like I said, they they should have checked with her to see if that was actually something she wanted to do Ask. to be because now you're bringing up this cause and she might be like, well, sis, I was about out the door anyway. Well, right. you know, I was tired of this shit anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, or uh, like I said, getting fired might've been like, well, actually, why would I want to work at a school like this? You she know? might be like, now I can collect unemployment while I look for something else <laughs> as opposed to quitting. Point blank point. And she could have been violating other school rules as well like you Absolutely. don't know like i agreed with uncle phil when he was like we need to get the facts like that, that i'm i'm like that like cool let's have a i'm also like carlton y'all sitting around let's complaining ain't school, doing shit yeah. ain't ain't doing nothing let's make yeah. a plan to do something but also wait we might want to i would have been like well has anybody talked to mrs hughes about yeah. this <laughs> because obviously the parents the kids might not have her contact information but i would imagine the parents do absolutely or it's something especially because like especially for the banks because first of all they have a lot of you know power money and they've had three children that have been through her class her. yeah so it's like it would make sense that you guys would run in similar similar circles or and is, is the me. head of the parent teacher conference or yeah, whatever exactly like exactly so it, you're right but um, I think the other thing is that I thought just to speak about from the episode with the whole Doc and JB and whatever his niece's name was, the, the basketball scout. So it started off like I accepted it for what it was. But at the end of the episode two, when they're like looking at his stuff, it really like I never thought that JB was shady till I saw that, and I'm like, is he shady? Is Doc the shady? Well, obviously Doc's the shady. One. Doc's the shady one. Yeah, but well, it's what like... I took from that scene was because Doc was it. Oh, J, it seemed like JB was trying to authentically push introduce. Boy. Yeah, push his boy like he because he what he said in that scene was like he liked that right, and he was like, yeah, yeah. he cool. He not my typical kid, but look at this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and. That to me, that meant that okay, Doc is going to be pushing this shady shit, yeah, um, up on him. I think that Jack, are you also saying that you feel like Jackie's ingenuine as well, or like no, it's I all like Jackie's con? genuine? I just it just it gave this like dark overtone to like I, I group them as a character group because they all oh, okay, the yeah, they all uh -huh. together, they all are intertwined, but it just gave this like ominous tone to like what's going to happen next with him. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, 
essentially it seems like you about to use Will to get some money. Or, you know what I mean? Like I feel like so this is my hood nigga brain. I feel like they're gonna try to rob him. Mm. That yeah. that's what just goes that off the night. when people start doing stuff like that. Normally they like, oh, he he's a lick. Right. Because right? Uncle Phil is not the type of character that's can get played like blatantly played that way. Nah. He might think that, not like to, to your point, he might think that he is, but I feel like after meeting him after the, the game, that'd be no dice. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then so my thought is Jeffrey that they're gonna Jeffrey. set him up, set up, set up the rob him. Jeffrey in the back. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't. Yeah. So speaking of me- back on the mental illness health talk, mm-hmm. I don't think that they, I think that they're handling his anxiety better than they, or showing it or developing it better than I've seen in a lot of other shows. Mm-hmm. I just feel like they're missing one key thing. Mm-hmm. The boy's on meds, but he does not go to therapy. Right, y'all are talking to his doctor. Mm-hmm. I we haven't seen him talk to his doctor. No. Um, I think that if you feel like his anxiety is so bad, why are you just medicating him versus mm-hmm. actually getting him ongoing help? Uh, which is a, a, a mistake, I guess. And maybe this is a rich people thing. Give me the medicine. I'd rather not have the mark of right. going to therapy. Cover the like, problem. Don't, yeah. We don't need to fix it right now. We'll fix it later. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that they do a good job when they explore like the kids or how people treat people with anxiety. Mm-hmm. When because I often feel like this when so, so when somebody knows I have anxiety as bad as I do, sometimes when I'm not doing what they want me to do, oh, it's just your anxiety. Will does that to to Carlton. Yeah, but when I do what you want me to do, oh, I'm I'm breaking through my anxiety or whatever. But they can't see that actually you are creating more anxiety in me by putting pressure on me to do the thing that yeah. I'm hesitant to do. Yep. Or mentioning it, honestly. I know or what the fuck I have. Yeah. What I'm dealing with. If you as my friend know that I have anxiety and you put, or my cousin for that matter, mm-hmm. and you put a big task on me, yeah. I don't think that you are supportive. Absolutely. No, I get that. Because this BSU thing is going to escalate. Yeah. If the, if y'all didn't catch it, I've seen the third episode. And so... Um, and he tried to stop it. I mean, you know, he came up to him in what uh, regular anxiety-stricken person who was just told that your entire, like, high school career <laughs> and reputation falls on what you're about to do next. Um, and I think I like this because it's not a white person. And it's not right. a white person telling him that he should do not, that. you know, do whatever it is. A black woman saying, yeah, bro. Yeah, like your cause is just, but this might not be the way you you resolve it. Mm-hmm. And the the thing, I think that this is, this touches on like a really good thing within the black community or within the, within society is that you want to take up causes, but realistically is like can you take up this particular cause if i got kids if you saying that we should pull a strike you know what i'm saying can i reasonably do that when i got kids to feed or a house that you know what i'm saying whatever like um i think of uh sorry to bother you that movie where they were having a strike or whatever but he was like nigga we about to get kicked out you know what i'm saying like I, I, i i think that and again Maybe the protest wouldn't have been needed if you just talked to Miss Hughes. <laughs> you just talked to Miss Hughes. Uh, mm-hmm. It wouldn't be this much pressure on a thing. But I think that it's interesting that they put this black woman in this place to say, "Nah, nah, son, you you doing it the wrong way." Oh, you you. I don't know if they say it in this episode, but she gonna be like, "You were supposed to get that Founders Award." Yeah, Everybody's looking at you for it or whatever. I think that yeah, that just really plays on like our human. Like we want how one decision we make could fuck up our our the rest of our livelihood. Absolutely. Or just being able to decide if this is for you. Like for example, with the Black Lives Matter movement, <clears throat> I have children, young children. So like being out on the streets marching, that wasn't my role. <laughs> like that wasn't my role in that movement. 
-hmm. Like my role is more donation or, you know, whatever I can do from my home with in the protection of my children. Uh, but all in all, yeah, three stars. I'm just, I, I like being entertained by the show more than anything. Yeah, and I get it. I, I like the the dramatization, the the realisticness of it all, yep. but um, you do miss a little bit of entertainment in that. Like, mm -hmm. life isn't all doom and gloom either. Like, we laugh <laughs> in the midst of stress. I still laugh, and you don't get that part. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think you can't, I don't think you can have the tone be what it is and still have that sitcom -y feel to it, though. No, it can't be a sitcom, but there can be funny, the occasional funny moments. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, and we talked about this before, like with Poker Face, it's overall not a sitcom, but there are moments that are fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, like episodes were good. I enjoyed them. I'm ready to see where the rest of the season goes. Uh, they should just drop the rest of it because this is really not that deep to be having them episodically or whatever. It's not. They could drop it. <laughs> they could drop it and I wouldn't be mad at you nope. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, overall, I agree. Um, but yeah, we'll see what else they, they come up with. Yep. We'll, we'll be back to report it all back to y'all. Yeah, that's it for this episode. Yeah. Bye. Peace.